I wanted to talk about something that's a little bit more challenging, at least for me to talk about. Um, and truly, I'm getting out of my comfort zone. Um, I'm mad at myself. Um, but at the end of the day, I want to be a part of this solution. And I want the Pacers to be a part of the solution. And right now, I'm angered in pain to see the images of racism in our country. Um, the core of all humanity should be love and peace for one another and not violence and prejudice. You know, the horror of George Floyd's um, death was incredible. It was, I can't imagine if that was um, a, a family member. I was just on the phone with Steve Kerr and you know, Steve and I have a lot of things in common in that we played college basketball and then got into the pros and we competed against each other. And uh, he gave me some great advice. And some of the things that are sticking with me right now is that, you know, our league is a great league and it's a league that has many different backgrounds, race, color, nationality, all kinds of backgrounds. And putting all those differences aside to try and come together and achieve a goal as one is something I think we do really well. And within the, the, the Pacers organization, I think you guys, everybody on this call knows that we believe in 3T, togetherness, toughness, and trust. And every single day we try to bring people together. And while it's very difficult to win in this league, it's not difficult to treat each other equally. It really isn't hard of a task. And the fact that some of, of the individuals can't do this is very painful. Black lives matter. Um, social injustice is happening. Police brutality is awful. And we're seeing it in the black communities. And we can't have that. And I grew up in a, in a society and I'm, I'm part of white. Um, it's been easy to be white. And I'm talking to uh, all, all these people, David West, Carl Nix, Nate McMillan, and I'm seeing how they live and I've had to live. And it's very difficult to see my friends having to live that way. And so we have to be a part of the solution. Um, one of the things we did here recently was have a town hall meeting. And we had Malcolm, Erica from the Fever, Malcolm Brogdon from Fever, Erica and Tamika from the Fever, and TJ McConnell. And it was the most powerful hour I have ever had in my entire life. And they talked with raw emotion about what they're going through and how their lives have been and uh, what their day-to-day -day lives look like. And it was awful to hear. It was awful to hear. And um, I, I want to personally thank someone right now from the bottom of my heart publicly, not privately, publicly. And that is when Erica spoke um, she broke down, she cried, and from what I know little of her, she gives back so much to her community, and um, we as a society, we have, as the Pacers, uh, me personally, have to do something, and one of the things that I'm most concerned about is that in the short term, we get all excited about this and we, we, we come together. We have to make societal changes. Now, it's not just on us. Malcolm has been unbelievable. I've talked to Malcolm every day through this. He's been unbelievable saying there's systemic uh, issues and that we all have to get behind and we all have to chip away at it. We all, we all have to have... Um, uh, educate ourselves um, and so we're gonna have to do a lot better uh, 
I truly felt all their pain during that, uh, that call. And I can tell you this, we have their backs. We have to do more with PS and E. Um, I think there's some things we've done okay. And I think there's some things we haven't and we have to do much, much better, um, for our communities and, uh, uh, moving forward. I think one of the positive things I'm seeing and feeling right now is, is I'm watching and talking to Malcolm Brogdon every day. And he is a superstar. He's not a star. He is a superstar. When I first met him, when we, when we signed him, we walked out of the, the first meeting with him and we said, that guy's a president. He is truly a president. And what he is doing in the community, I think this organization is so proud. And we're watching him and his platform is growing and he wants it. And that's something that we can get behind. And um, I feel like we can do a couple things. I think, first of all, we can learn. We can listen, um, and then we can take action with our brothers. Um, and I'm, I'm extremely proud to stand next to my coach, extremely cr uh, proud. And Nate and I, we joke at times. We've been together 11 or 12 years. We argue like brothers. We disagree about things, and then we get mad at each other, and we don't talk to each other for a week and but him and I have a saying together and it's been pretty powerful and that is we agree we disagree and then we unite and so um, that seems to hit me as hard as anything uh, I'm really proud of every single player and coach in our locker room and they have expressed a desire to be part of the solution and I stand here today ready to listen, learn, and take action. And this is our younger generation, guys. Our younger generation is so powerful right now. Malcolm, Miles, Justin, Aaron, uh, the Fever players, they are so powerful right now. And we need to listen. We need to let them lead. And, uh, and then we can be a part of the, the, the solution. So... Um, I know I have a lot of ideas. This is not easy. This is out of my comfort zone, but I'm going to get out of my comfort zone. Uh, again, I'm mad at myself because I haven't seen this. I've been ignorant to this. Um, I've had best buddies who have been African American who I've spent every day practicing uh, playing basketball, playing in in the hoops and the in the in you know outdoors, and was unaware. And I want to end by saying this: I had a long conversation today with one of our scouts. He's a local scout, and he's truly a great human being. And he told me of a story. that he doesn't feel comfortable going to the grocery store. I've never had that problem. And my white privilege makes me feel guilty. And so I'm going to do everything I can possible to help this person feel good in any community. And I promise you, we're not sitting idly. We're not thinking short term, we are thinking long term. And we want to be a pillar of this community. We need to be, we need to be the first, we need to shout out loud, and we need to be next to our brothers. And I guarantee you, if you need someone to listen, to learn, and take action with, we have it. Malcolm Brogdon is incredible. Miles is incredible. We have those people, and I'm so proud of them.
And, you know, emotions are very raw right now. We're all having these raw emotions. But Nate said it the best to me. He said, you know you have a good heart. You know when people don't. Your job is to stand by, to listen, to learn, and then activate next to people. And when you see it, call it out. So we're going to do that. We're going to do it our best of our ability, and we're going to stand up for what's right. Hey Kevin, thanks for doing this. Um, obviously, we've seen what Malcolm has done. I'm sure there's been guys behind the scenes that we haven't seen what, what they have done. When it comes to actions, what have those conversations been like within your team about, you know, what they want to do as a team individually, whether that's when you guys get back together here in Indy or in, in Orlando, what have those talks been like? Well, the team, we're talking with the team all the time. We do Zoom meetings every week, multiple, multiple times at, at times. Um, and we see the, the dialogue and the issue. Um, Miles has said here today with me that he's more encouraged today than ever because he, he read about the LA, uh, police and they're giving 150 million back into the, com their communities. Um, I think what, what Malcolm wants to do is get back here, come together, talk of exactly what they want and have an action plan together. I think it's difficult through this COVID of, of really bringing people together. We tried through Zoom, but Zoom is, Zoom is uh, it's still not together. You, you feel it, but you don't really feel it, right? So I know the guys want to come together. Uh, I know that they want to talk, talk as a group to governmental, government officials like our mayor and our governor. I think that is a great first step. Uh, Malcolm is really big on one thing right now, and he has challenged me and everybody within our organization, and that is educate ourselves. Educate. Educate on uh, what it, what, what, what's really going on, what's really happening in our communities. Listen to them when they say, you know, Miles – had a had a uh, a recent uh, and it wasn't in Indianapolis was pulled over and he's with a couple other African Americans and as the cop approached he was shaking in his car he was shaking in his car yeah I get nervous when the police uh, pull me over I'm not shaking I know that I'm going home that day they don't know if they're going home. Um, or if something bad is going to happen. That's what we all have to change. And I think that's, you know, there are times for me when I have to lead, and I, I feel like I'm a servant leader. There are times where I have to shut the hell up and listen to these men, these, these men who want to lead, who want to get out front. So the best thing I can do is listen to Malcolm, is listen to Victor, listen to TJ. Um, the thing that I know more than anything else in this is I give credit to Chad, to Kelly, to Peter, to Nate, because we choose as much as we possibly can great humans to represent the Pacers. And let's let them shine right now more than ever, more than the basketball. Let's let Erica shine. Let's let Malcolm shine. It's a beautiful thing, and that's what will allow this, this community to grow because that's what has to happen. This community and this state has to grow, and we're watching. I'm watching. I'm, I'm, I'm taking Malcolm's cues, and there could be no better person for me than Malcolm Brogdon right now. We, we were lucky to sign him. I'm curious, Kevin. Your visceral reaction, I asked Frank Reich this question as well, but your visceral reaction when you first saw the video of, uh, of George Floyd and what happened with What was it? Your, your, your visceral emotional reaction when you saw the, the video of, of uh, that encounter. 
I mean, I, I watched it with my family first, and we've watched it one other time together. And uh, I think I saw pure evil. Uh, and I saw something that was so vile that it's hard to explain in words. Because if you could ever imagine that that would be a family member or some, a friend or one of my teammates in college or teammates in the NBA, to me it was vile. And then, then I'm saddened, you know, then I'm saddened at that. But on one hand, Bob, you know, I'm a positive person. And, and I want to take something positive from this. And I want to take it that we have an opportunity in this community. I can't affect what happens in Minneapolis as much as I can here. I want our community to be better. And if I can be a little help, you know, like there's a saying in basketball, help the helper, right? I want to help Malcolm. I want to help Miles. I want to help TJ Warren. I want to help Justin. And so I think that's my biggest thing is what can we do to listen and then help as much as possible and not make this a sprint. It's not about today or tomorrow and then we go away. I want, I, I heard a story from Nate that he was scared to drive through a few states. And I said, Nate, this doesn't go away and we don't succeed until you tell me I drove, drove through a state and I wasn't scared. And it may not happen in my gen, uh, generation. It may happen with our kids. I mean, I, I live downtown. I, I'm seeing the, the uh, what's going on. And it's all different races that is protesting. And I think that's the most beautiful thing about it. Our youth can get us through it. I truly believe that. Yeah, Kevin, you know, the, the NBA has had a history of diversity and inclusion, you know, throughout uh, the league, and in particular the last 20 or 30 years. Um, I'm just curious what kind of example you feel like the league can kind of set from this point forward uh, in regards to uh, uh, this current situation. Well, I think we have a leader in Adam who I would say his best uh, attribute now let me let me let me say this. Adam is in an almost impossible situation, right? He's trying to make owners. He's trying to make players' association. He's trying to make uh, management. He's got all these pressures around, but he is meeting with us every single week, and he's listening. He's listening to what we think the issues are, and. I have no doubt he can get us through. As for examples, I think we need more inclusion training. We've had it. It changed me, but I have to change more. We made a hire Kelly um, because we felt it was the right thing to do. And to be honest with you, through this, through this last five or six days, Kelly has been a superstar. Not a star. She's been a superstar. So I hired her and everybody says, well, she's a, you know, female and you've done a good job. I feel like that's bullshit. She's good at her job, period. And without her, I don't know where we are. And she's bringing us together along with Corey, who's working on the business side with the community. I think you're going to see a completely new Pacers organization. And if you're, and if we're not, Hold us accountable. That's the difference. We are willing to be held accountable. And we want it. Because if we do it, if we're the pillar of this community with the Colts and the fever and, and uh, our, we have a pillar. I keep telling Malcolm every day, we're giving you the pillar. We're listening to you. You do it and we got your freaking back. I hope I answered that. <laughs> I'm getting a little – I'm emotional. I'm, I apologize, guys. You're emotional, Kevin. I've never seen you cry before. How often do you cry? I, I want to ask two questions. That's, that's the first one, little one. Are you a crier or is this a little bit unusual for you? 
a little unusual. Um, it sounds like a lot of guys shared their stories, and you heard from a scout, you heard from Miles, you heard from Nate. I'm guessing you heard similar. Did anybody else, whether you want to give their names or not, could you tell anything else that you've heard, these horror stories that you're taking to heart? Well, Greg, I'd ask those people if I could bring their names into this. So I don't want to disrespect anybody. I can tell you this. Um, it's been everybody. And I think that's what hits us home. And, and you know, in my white privilege, I'm arrogant, I'm ignorant to it, ignorant. And, and being in a locker room where we walk out the door and we're buddies and we're in it together to go fight another team and then they leave and they drive home and they're scared shitless. That, to me, is on Kevin Pritchard. I need to know that. We take a lot of pride in signing, trading, drafting players or good human beings and getting to know them and making sure they feel good about being here. And I haven't done as good a job as I need to. I've got to listen more and help more. And that's not bullshit. We, as a group, have to do better. I'm just curious uh, what you think Pacers fans can do to support Malcolm Brogdon's efforts and what you would tell NBA fans in general right now. What to do to help? Well, I'm not in the social media world very often. I, I read it a little bit, but I think that's such a powerful avalanche of information and positivity. The more you can say, Malcolm, I hear you. I'm listening. We want to help. We're, we're behind you. I think that is as powerful as it gets. Um, what was the second question, Tony? Uh, similar, just what you'd tell NBA fans in general to do to support players and what they're speaking out for right now. You know, I think we, we all have to be sensitive. Um, I'm, you know, what, what comes back to me personally is that what's made Nate and I a good partnership, not from wins and losses, just from a good partnership, is that we are okay with disagreeing. And that at the end of the day, it feels like sometimes I win and sometimes he wins, but we always unite. Sometimes it takes a few days to get there, but we always unite. And I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that we can all have these in incredibly powerful conversations when we come together and we unite against this brutality, against social injustice. Um, my ears are open and my eyes are open for the first time in my life. Hey, Kevin, uh, just curious, uh, you had talked to Malcolm before the video showed up where he was in the middle of the protest in Atlanta, or did you see the video and you thought, yep, that, that's, that's Malcolm. That's the guy we brought on to this organization. I talked to him before. I talked to him right after, um, you know, the one thing that he does believe, and he sends me these phenomenal texts every day, and he says, I can't thank you enough for giving me this platform. And the truth is, we didn't give him anything. He was going to get to it without us. Um, I just know that I feel like I'm in a unique position to watch a young person coming up in, in, in age with the exact message that this world needs. He is my president. I've learned more from him on this than I ever thought I would and ever thought I could. We have a star in the making and I'm getting behind him in every way I can financially Standing next to him, he gave a powerful speech on the uh, 
on a, uh, what is it called? A town hall meeting with about 400, 500 pe people. Erica and Tamika was on that. TJ McConnell was on that. And I got off it and I called him. I said, Malcolm, I'll follow you anywhere, side by side, with you, behind you, in any place. I will do everything I can to help you. And he, you know, he feels this company's, this organization's commitment to him. And I hope it's just not him. I hope it's everybody. And to me, that's a powerful thing we can do. If we get behind him, look, the platform he's creating is bigger than basketball. You know, again, I would not be surprised. Uh, well, I'll put it this way. He has my vote. Hey, uh, Kevin, what, you know, what happens, though, when you're going to have a segment of fan base that pushes back and says, stop doing this, um, shut up and dribble kind of thing? Stop doing what, Jay? Uh, uh, ju just the, the kind of the things that you're talking about pushing forward to create change. They don't want to hear it. Stop, uh, stop doing what's right. Correct. You're going to have pushback on that. That's to be realistic. Everybody's not going to be rah, rah. This is a great thing to do. Uh, that's kind of part of the reason why you see why the NFL had taken the stance that it had of kind of be more hands off. If you encounter that or when you encounter that, what's your going to be your response to it or the organization's response to it? Well, I can only say this in that town meeting and in our conversations, Herb and specifically Steve Simon lately has been completely moved and has been floored, emotional, and ready to do whatever it takes to do what's right for the community first. And so I feel amazing, amazing amount of uh, resources that can be put behind this, but also an amazing amount of support from Herb and Stevie. Stevie is getting in. He's going to get his hands dirty. You're going to see it. He wants it. Um, I may be telling a little bit out of turn, but so be it. He spoke up at the Board of Governors, and I heard what he said was incredible. He talked about our town hall meeting with Erica and Tamika and Malcolm and TJ McConnell and said it moved him so much. But I want to be perfectly clear again. We will make a mistake if this is a sprint. We want to get all excited today. So I'm challenging. The thing that I'm doing with Malcolm right now and, and Miles to a certain degree is making sure that the ball doesn't get dropped tomorrow and that this has legs to it. And I don't think that's going to be a problem. I really don't. Uh, my question is, obviously, I know you want them to, to be out there and use their voices. Malcolm, of course, we saw him at the protest down in Atlanta. How much are you encouraging them, or it's just totally hands off, to go out in the community to be part of this and to be seen, not just on social media, but in their communities, even though some of them aren't here right now? How much are you encouraging that, or are you just kind of letting them do it as they see fit. I would say it's not encouragement. It's gentle nudges every day. I trust Malcolm. I trust our players implicitly. They're going to get us through this. Uh, so for me, it's, it's, I'm encouraging. Yes, of course. And when I say nudge, it's an, a joke a joking way but man I trust him and what I'm telling him every day is keep doing it don't stop the problem is this it's an emotional toll it's an emotional toll on all of us I think you will all agree watching tv every day it's an emotional toll but we have to you know I'm not good at conflict and I'm not good at you know, telling people how to do and, and react and be around racial issues. The thing that I'm telling Malcolm is 
This is your time to shine. Do it. We trust you. The organization trusts you. Steve and Herbie trust you. So do it, and we got your back. Hey, Kevin, with everything that's happened in these last couple of weeks, do you get the sense from your players, or do you feel this way that it's more important than ever to get back on the basketball court to maybe keep this momentum going, or just the opposite? You know, it's a, a tough question, but I called Nate this morning, and I said, Nate, are we going to be looked upon as insensitive if we push basketball right now? And without missing a beat, his first response was, what the world needs right now is a little bit of love and fun. And so his reaction is, let's get back together. I think it's important to get our team back together. We've been apart for so long. And Zoom can only do so much. And we're doing a lot of it. We're doing it every week, multiple times a week. We're, we've done more Zooms and communications. And literally, 90% of the conversations have nothing to do with basketball. And that's okay because that's what it is right now. I do believe there's a time now that we got to get back because the world needs to see beautiful, graceful, athletic uh, wonderful sports, competitions. We live for it. And the bottom line is it unites us. Sports unites us. You know, yeah, you could say when we play the Bulls and the Indiana Pacers play, it's a little divisive. But as soon as the game's over, we all talk about it in a, in a great way. Oh, my team's better than your team. And, and it's, it's in a good way. And I think the world needs sports more than ever. To be honest with you, that's my opinion. Coming from a biased, huge sports and particularly basketball junkie, I just I want to see. I don't care who the game is. I just want to see good basketball. I'm watching NASCAR right now. I've never watched NASCAR in my life. I'm sorry, David Benner. I'm sorry. But I just want to see good competition. And I think of, to me, there's a beauty. There's a saying I'm going to – butcher it, but Stephen Rails, one of our owners, talked about it. There's the tyranny of the or and the beauty of the and. And what it means is we can come back and still work on our racial uh, issues and police brutality and have beautiful basketball games. It's not an or. We can have both. And so that's the beauty of and. You've, you've mentioned momentum a few times and maintaining the momentum. We've never been able to maintain the momentum in this kind of uh, time. How do we maintain the momentum and why does this time feel different? Well, I've never gone through anything quite like this, first of all. Um, I saw it downtown for the first time in my life. I live downtown. I breathe downtown. Uh, for me, seeing fires, drive-by shootings, people tackled, uh, looting on Mass Street, I mean, it hits me home. So I think that's what's different for me. What was the other question, Ken? Uh, why is this time different? I think I mean, it's different from you for you, right? It's different yeah. for me. It's different for all of us. I, I don't know why that is. I'm just interested in your perspective. I think it's a good question. I mean, my gut feel is whether we've locked it up in a little piece of our brain and and compartmentalized and said, ah, it's not an issue, it's not an issue. And then the graphic nature of Mr. Floyd getting killed the way he, he does sparks and lets it expand in our minds and say, holy f this is something real and we better deal with it. Along with our youth coming in and saying, you old people, you old white people, every people, you have 
it's your it's not your time it's our time let us speak up and so you see great leaders come up and you go in my mind when i'm watching on any social media and i see something or i hear something it hits me and the thing that has hit me the most you know and kelly came up with this she read it and i said god dang kelly that is incredible i understand that i don't understand and for a person of my age, uh, who I am, that's a hard thing to admit. But I don't understand what I don't understand. And I'm willing to give that. So um, I think right now you have, an, a, a, you know, and, and COVID has brought, you know, maybe been the accelerant. But so be it. We're here right now. Deal with it. And let's get to a better place because we have a chance to let these young kids lead us through in a better world where, where, you know, one of the things I'm so thankful, I, I don't know if you guys follow um, uh, Rex Chapman. Rex Chapman has this amazing Twitter feed and half the time it's hilarious, hilarious. And then half the time it's in your face. Watch this and get better. And so I'm so thankful for Rex in allowing us to see, to laugh, but also see our issues. Kevin, you mentioned your vote. Uh, it's cast for Malcolm. You can make two for that. Are his political aspirations in your mind formally being involved with politics is that right around the corner for him? You know, I think that's a question for him. I would say this, that when I signed him, uh, not mentioning many names, but people from his college, from people that know him, uh, made, it, made it sure that they, huh, that, that it was aware that if he chooses to go, that he will have unbelievable backing and also say this, that when Herbie and I talk about it, I think you're going to have, you know, to, to, to be a president or, or get in, you have to have a lot of things. You have to have resources. You have to have people that believe in you. You have to have higher ups. Um, I know this. I will choose to be his campaign manager. Hey, Kevin, uh, obviously uh, you're the, the state's basketball team and a lot of Indiana is uh, you know, rural, predominantly white. Uh, I'm just wondering, would you really like the Pacers to kind of be a, uh, a leader on this issue beyond just Indianapolis, you know, throughout the region, throughout the state? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I don't – why? Why stop at Indianapolis? You know, I think, I think this is true, you know. Uh, I don't want it to be one of those things you fact check and I'm way off, but I'll, I'll give it to you. I think we have fans in every county in the state. I think we have season, uh, we have ticket holders that have come from every county. So our reach is strong. Our reach is impactful. And um, so I think we have an opportunity to affect real change. And, and again, I'm not the kind of guy, I don't want to be the guy that says, oh, we're going to affect change, and then three months later, we don't. I hired someone who I'm so impressed with, and I have no doubt they can do this a lot better than I can, and I'm going to follow her lead, and that's Kelly Kroskoff. Kelly has a passion for this. She wants it to be great. She doesn't want it to be day-to-day uh, -day and then done. And I think you'll see Rick Fusion and our management staff say, this is something permanent and we're going to do what's right in this community and we're going to stand as a pillar because we are. People look to us. People want us. You know, I am absolutely sure today people will hear what I say and be upset. And that's okay. People have the right to be upset. I have the right to ignore that. Um, but at the end of the day, I want to look at my kids 
and we're having my kids and I we're having these we're having these conversations and my my daughter is crying because she sees what happened and she's saying um, you know why is this happening I don't understand it you know we have the right to help these kids to get behind them and push them up not push them down to push them up because they see the world in a completely different place and better place. So, God, I feel like I'm preaching. I'm sorry, guys. Thanks for doing this. I'm curious, you've been involved in the NBA for a long time as a player, general manager. Um, the NBA has generally been regarded as a bit of an oasis from racism or at least progressive in its uh, nature, actions. As you look back from today's perspective, are there some things you view differently? Can you look back on, yeah, that was really a race issue there, or that was something that could have been handled better, or that was something you know that would not happen today, that kind of thing? I think the biggest thing for me from all this in terms of just takeaways from a leadership perspective is, you know, when we bring players in, Mark, we sit them down and we talk about what the Pacers are about. And we say three T togetherness, toughness, and trust. And we live and breathe it. And then we allow them to talk. And actually our players came up with three T. It's not my idea. It was their idea. They, they came to us and said, my first year, here's what we want your and our organization. I think what we have to do is I think when we bring in our players, I think, you know, I'll give you an example. When I grew up um, and played at Kansas basketball, I played for Roy Williams. And every single day before practice, there was an offensive emphasis. There was a defensive emphasis. And you had to memorize it. And then there was a thought of the day. And that thought of the day had nothing to do with basketball. Zero. And so 15 minutes before practice, we would have these worldly – discussions. I want to challenge us to talk about the offensive emphasis of the day and the defensive emphasis of the day. But I want to challenge us to talk about real life issues every day and listen to our players. And I think that for me is as important as anything is when we bring in players to listen to say, what is truly important to you? And let us help you with your platform. And if we do that, guys will tie roots better here because I want our players not to come in and be hired guns and then out of here. It's too easy. And maybe that's in theory, Mark. Maybe I can't do that. But I'm going to try to get players uh, to understand what's important to them, allow them to succeed in that platform, and allow and hopefully – they grow stronger roots to Indianapolis and help these communities.